Some subway riders in San Francisco, they're asking this question, have my First Amendment rights been violated? But, you know, when you talk to the folks with uh, the mass transit system in the city, they say they're just trying to keep passengers safe. Here's the, here's the story. Protesters led by this hacker group Anonymous, they tried to disrupt service at several BART stations across the city yesterday. BART, an acronym for Bay Area Rapid Transit. The deal is that they're angry that BART officials decided to shut down cell phone service uh, ahead of a planned protest last week. BART did last night uh, temporarily shut down four stops in anticipation of another protest, um, but they did not shut off riders cell phone service the basic issue here one of the issues we want to point out free speech versus safety i want to bring in lawrence walters who is a first amendment attorney and lawrence good to have you on i just want to start with something really simple you know the story in in shutting off riders cell service is that within bart's constitutional rights to do that or is that overreaching well it's the constitutional rights of the protesters that are, that are at issue here BART doesn't have constitutional rights to, to do anything. The constitutional rights of the protesters are the ones that we should be concerned with here. And this is a compound violation. Not only were the free speech rights of the protesters interfered with by shutting down the cell phone service, it was done for the purpose of violating another constitutional right, which is the right of association. They were just worried about this protest, and they tried to interfere with free speech rights as a means to control a protest, which is a, a compound violation of the Constitution. It's outrageous. Well, I know that this is sort of, and correct me, but I think this is getting into territory that hasn't really been delved into in terms of government shutting off cell service. In this case, it's, you know, a city's public transportation system. But I did talk to a BART communications official yesterday. He came on the show he stood by their decision uh, and he said essentially that the agency very much so acted within the rights of the Constitution I want to just play just a portion of what he told me I actually believe we upheld our customers constitutional rights because we prevented um, those who are trying to do our customers harm from using the tool the very tool that was provided to them as a safety mechanism from the, we, pre we prevented the protesters from using it against our customers. And so we preserved that tool for them in a very narrow, focused period of time, three hours, when which they said they were going to disrupt BART service, as well as over four stations. And only on the platform level was this disrupted. In the interest of protecting their constitutional right to safety, as well as their ability to free speech. So here's my question to you, Lawrence, because I understand and I think a lot of riders appreciate they're, they're looking out to protect the riders' safety, but a constitutional right to safety, does that exist? Well, look, it, in, in doing this for over 20 years, this is the first time I've ever heard that there's a constitutional right to safety. Look, in a, a free society does not guarantee safety. It is somewhat dangerous to live in a free society. If you want a, a safe, secure society then move to a place like Russia or China where everything is controlled and nothing ever happens that's questionable but here this is a free society which requires a certain thick skin to live in and a certain degree of tolerance and yeah there might be protests yeah sometimes people might be inconvenienced but that's the price we pay to live in a free society and to have freedom of speech and it's are not up to BART to decide when we get that freedom of speech are there any situations in which a government a mass transit system could rightly so turn off someone's cell service I'd have to say, sure, yeah, yeah, if there was a, uh, an indication, let's say, that somebody was going to use a cell phone to detonate a bomb, that's a perfect instance of where the, the government, for purposes of preserving national security and to protect life and limb, may temporarily violate the right to freedom of speech if there is a known credible threat. But here, we don't have any indication of that. Here, it sounds like they were just trying that, to disrupt the protests. No, stopping a demonstration, okay. which is in itself protected, is not sufficient. Just wanted to ask Lawrence Walters, First Amendment attorney, appreciate you coming on. Now this. Happy to be here.